In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate measures of central tendency, the mode, the median, and the mean, and measures of dispersion, range and standard deviation, for a frequency distribution for an interval level variable. So we're in the PETS spreadsheet here of the workbook 0506 dispersion. And the answers, as always, are in the other spreadsheet here in red. So the first one we can calculate is the mode. And this we can just essentially read from a table like this, because it's just the biggest one. And we can say that, well, 72 is the biggest number in this column. And the mode is the value. So 72 people have three pets. So the mode is three. And we would say that the most commonly reported number of pets that people ever owned was three. Easy part cheesy. Next, remember from last time that the median we can calculate using the cumulative percentage distribution. And the rule is that it's the value that just makes it over 50%. So let's calculate that. Cumulative percentage. Now, in order to calculate the cumulative percentage, or any percentage, we need to know the total. So in this particular case, we have the don't know category. So this would be missing data. So these are all numbers, the number of pets that somebody has ever owned, not that they currently own now. 29 people have owned seven pets throughout their life. So we want to sum up these. Okay, we want this to be our valid total. So if we wanted to write this out, we would have total. And our total would just be alt equals. That would get all of them. And then if we wanted a valid total, would be the sum of all of the ones that are actual numbers. So these frequencies are linked with actual numbers. So B3 to B10, enter. So now that we have this done, we have our total number of cases, we can start calculating our cumulative percentage distribution. So the first one is just this particular category divided by the total. Enter. And the next one's going to be this percentage above it plus the percentage to the left. So the percentage to the left is this number divided by the total. And I'm going to want to lock this with F4. Hit F4, it makes dollar signs there. Or you could type them in. Dollar sign B, dollar sign 13. Because I want to copy this down. I want it always to be the one above and the one to the left. But I always want to be locking in to the valid total. I'll hit Enter. I'll drag this down to here. I'll fix the number of percentages, decrease the decimals. two decimal places. Double click between the lines, between the cells and the line between the cells to auto fit it, which makes it just over 50% in this distribution. So we have 9, 20, 32, 51.9. So this category is going to contain the middle case. The middle case is the 50%. So this category is going to contain everything from 32 to 51 0.92%. So the 50% is in this category. So therefore we know that 3 is the median. And to interpret this, we can say that about half of the people in the sample had fewer than 3 pets throughout their lives, and half had more than 3 pets. Now, in order, to, in order to calculate the average, there's a few steps we have to do. So going back to our PowerPoint slides, we can see that in order to, for frequency distributions, we need the average. That's one step. We already did the number of cases, the sum of all of the Fs, the total number of cases. 
but the average, we have to use a formula here. We need an x times f. x is each value, for example, zero pets, times the number of people who had that value. We want to create a column of those, and we're going to sum up that column, and then divide by the total number of cases, which is our sum of all of the f's. So again, we've already summed up all of our f's. What we're trying to do now is to create an x times f column. And how do we do that? Well, what is our x value? The x value is the number of pets. And we multiply that by the frequency. f is the number of people in our sample who have that value. So the frequency of those who have zero, there are 35 people who have zero pets ever. Enter. Now we can drag that down. And as you might guess, this is not formatted appropriately. So I can make this general. This is supposed to be a number. So there are zero pets in this category. So 35 people with zero pets means zero pets. 38 people with one pet means 38 pets. So what we're summing up here, the sum of the xf's is just the total number of pets in the sample. So I can copy this formula. It's going from 3 to 10. And that's what I want to do, but just in the D column. So I paste that over here. You can see it copied it using a relative formula. Now it's D3 to D10. I can hit F2 just to check it out. Yep, there it is. So that's the box that we want. Now the average, recall, was the sum of those XF's divided by N. So let's do that. So we have the total number of pets divided by the number of people. And this is going to give us the number of pets per person on average. So we, we can say this is, this reference this cell is B15, 3.44. And I can say that on average, people in the sample had 3.44 pets throughout their lives. So next, the range, we can also just read that directly from the distribution. So there are people who have zero, all the way up to seven people who have seven. So the range is the range of the values, the x values. So we have our minimum is zero, our maximum is seven, which allows us to, I'll just put this up here, which allows us to say that people in the sample reported having between zero and seven pets throughout their lives. And finally, the standard deviation. So for the standard deviation, the other component that we need in order to plug into this formula, we need the squared deviations from the mean. And in order to calculate that, we need an x minus x bar. So I'll just type that in here, x minus x bar, the average, squared times f. Now I want to make this formula in this cell. So it equals, I'll use the parentheses, the order of operations is very important. So equals x minus x bar. And I know we're going to copy this down, right? So we want this to copy down. We don't want this to copy down. We want this to be there. Always this particular cell. So we have to lock it hitting f4 end parentheses. I want to square that and then multiply by f, the number of people 
who have that particular deviation from the mean. I can copy this down. There we go. I can copy this formula over to the right, clicking on this cell, dragging the little black box to the right. And this is the sum of our squared deviations. So the variance is just the average squared deviation. And the average squared deviation is just deviations divided by the total number of cases. So this is our variance. This is the squared deviation from the mean on average. But the standard deviation is the actual average deviation from the mean. So if we have the squared deviation, we take the square root of that. And square roots are a little tricky, but there's a little function for that. We have to use the square root function to calculate the standard deviation from the variance. So equals sqrt, parenthesis, click on the variance, enter. So we can say that on average, the number of pets that people had throughout their lives differed from the mean by about 2.02 .02 pets. And that's it. We've done all of our description. We've done our measures of central tendency. To get a better look at it, we could select all of our data here. Remember, like last time, for integral level variables, we're going to have to explicitly say what the labels are. Because it's, it would, if we made a chart like this, it would think that these were also data, but they're not. These are our labels for the frequency distribution. So if we want a frequency distribution, we can highlight the data. Alt F1. And it's going to show us our frequency distribution right here. So I'll just move this so you can see what I'm about to do. So I need to click on the chart, right click, and click select. Yeah. And if you recall from last time, we need to explicitly give these data labels because the labels that are here do not match up. The mode, the biggest bar, should be under three, right? Three was the biggest category. It's just listing these in numerical order. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But that's not what we want. We want them to actually be, there were 35 people who had zero pets. So we have to add these labels like that. So we just added our horizontal category axis labels, and you can see that it's already updated. And that's what we wanted. So let's click OK. I can delete this, and I can add a title, layout, chart title, above chart. And I can say number of people with various numbers of pets ever. And there we are.